Hello, 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 everybody. This is Penny the Angelic Sweetheart here, and welcome to another podcast. And to, today, we have a special guest, and by me, I, I mean, <laughs> so, dang it, I had this all planned out. <laughs> anyway, we have a special guest with us today. And it is my bestie, who's never been on my channel before. So, give a warm welcome to Arabella Saber. Hi, guys. Yes, I've known her for, like, so long. and Seven years. Seven <laughs> years. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so, how are you? Um, I'm doing good. I uh, just got back from the hair salon, so I uh, got my hair cut and dyed. You got your hair cut in what? Uh, it got dyed, so it got uh, back into the original brown that I was born with. I see. Yep, and I got bangs, too. Yeah, well, my bangs are bothering the hell out of me. Oh. Well. I mean, I kind of missed my bangs. Well, my bangs need to be cut. <laughs> Case in point. I'm literally using barrettes to keep my bangs out of my face right now. I have headbands and ribbons for oh, my yeah. hair. Headbands and ribbons with your hair, okay. Oh, oh my gosh. So, um, why don't you tell the viewers about yourself? Okay, um, I, uh, do YouTube videos, I, uh, get anime pictures and I make slideshows, I am trying to make a series called Naruto Basket, which is sort of a Naruto fruit basket kind of crossover that I'm doing, and I finished a few months ago Cherry Blossom Academy, which took about almost a month to finish, since it was like about 15... Uh, 51, 52 episodes per day. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So, letting you know, making slideshows on your iPad and making the uh, video is not easy. Because you have to find the right pictures and you need to write the right text messages to make sure people can see them. Get a freaking computer, sweetie. I have a laptop, but it's more easier to do the slideshows on my tablet than my computer because both of all my cats sleep on my computer. Well, make them stop. <laughs> no. I mean, either or when it comes to my kitties. Speaking of which, uh, my cat Sheldon is staring at my burger. Mm-hmm. Well, that kitty needs to not steal your burger because that's your dinner. Yeah. Basically Burger King. Yeah, you're lucky you get takeout. <laughs> anyway. I mean, I was literally out, so. Yeah. And what are your hobbies besides making videos? Um, I uh, go for walks uh, before sundown to see the sunset, and I skip rocks. Or I basically, uh, what I used to do was swim. Okay. Which I actually miss, and I also miss ice skating. I used to do that a lot. Was that when you were a child? Uh, no, actually. Um, before COVID, uh, my friends and I used to go to the ice skating rink, and I used to ice skate. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Now well, there's some things you don't know about me, bestie. That's the adventure. Mm-hmm, Yeah. Okay, well, how about you can tell us what got you into anime? Like, what was your very first anime you ever watched that made you become a hardcore otaku? Oh, God. Um, actually, I was very little. I was two years old, and I remember on Cartoon Network that Inuyasha played. I didn't know what it was as a child, but I fell in love with it growing up. Uh, my dad doesn't remember much about it, but my mom knows that as a kid, I used to watch Inuyasha constantly. And then Fruit Basket started airing, and I used to watch Fruit Basket, and then Tokyo Mew Mew, and then Card Capture Sakura, and a little bit of Sailor Moon. I used to watch Inuyasha nonstop growing up. 
and Inuyasha was the one that got me into anime. And basically, um, as a kid, I loved it so much, and it was so cool because when I was little, I used to like go outside and try to find a way to go into feudal Japan and try to meet Inuyasha and the gang. <laughs> Yeah, as a, as a kid, I used to try to find holes or something to go in to basically meet Inuyasha and the friend and the whole gang. So it was kind of funny. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with imagination. Yeah, and then um, when Fruit Basket came out, I I fell in love with it because of like all the zodiacs and everything. And the funny thing is. Uh, I kind of liked Kira because her zodiac is a tiger, and I'm the year of the tiger. So when I saw her zodiac, I thought it was cool. Okay. So, I uh, but uh, Inuyasha still has a dear place in my heart. But what made me more into a hardcore anime fan was in elementary school. I used to watch Naruto and Dragon Ball Z. Those two animes were the ones that got me more hooked into anime. Because mm -hmm. when I started watching Naruto and I started watching Dragon Ball Z with all the, like, the fighting and stuff, that turned me on to anime even more immediately. Turned you on as in, like, you get sexually aroused? No. Basically, by, like, getting more into anime and more intrigued. Although, I kind of did, sort of, that sexually aroused with Sasuke because he was one of my crushes, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. If you guys know, I am a hardcore Sasuke fangirl. Do not judge me. And uh, let's just say Angel knows that I basically have a huge Sasuke obsession. Yes, I know that. Like, you wouldn't stop... Like, when we first met, you wouldn't shut up about him. <laughs> I have no regrets. Yeah, and unfortunately on here, we're not going to go into detail about any... Well, fantasies she has, she has about them because they're not appropriate, and this ain't a porn site, okay? Yeah, no, I'm just saying, but still. I mean, either or, he's my favorite character because he got me into the girl I am today. Uh-huh, I know. But my favorite Naruto character is Gara. He's my baby. I just want to give him cuddles and a bunch of love that he deserves. He's basically your cinnamon roll. Okay, I wouldn't say cinnamon roll. More like strawberry roll. Well, yeah, actually no. Naruto's my cinnamon roll. More like more like ramen. Yeah, he is my ramen bowl. Yes, he's your ramen bowl. Your fucking ramen bowl. <laughs> um, but there was another series I liked as a kid, which I think like it's an anime that people don't even remember and that's Sonic X. Mm -hmm. And it's so mistreated, people don't even remember it. And I actually remember Sonic X growing up. I think I watched a little bit of it, but I never really got into it. I, I, I did, and I'm letting you know that it was awesome. And my favorite character will always be Shadow. But it's just the the nostalgia of, like, Sonic X and, like, watching it now as an adult, like, on Netflix or, like, uh, Hulu. Watching it now... I basically go like, wow, why did I watch this? But it's just like, th the reason why I liked it was because of how amazing it was. And I basically ended up remembering that, that Sonic X aired on four kids with the really terrible dubs that they had back then, including One Piece, but that shall not be remembered. Well, One Piece's dub is okay. Like, I don't think it's um, uh, terrible, but... Well, yeah. that's the Funimation uh, dub, which is a lot better than the Four Kids. The Four Kids one sucked. Four Kids sucked ass. Well, yeah, because if, remember how bad the Tokyo Mew Mew uh, Tokyo Mew Mew's dub was. Oh, it was terrible. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it either. That's why I sticked with the sub. And and yes, I. I heard that they're coming out with a new Toki- with a new, improved Tokyo Mew Mew. I don't know when it's coming out. I- I'm excited for that. I'm just hopefully that the- if they ever dubbed it, it wouldn't be bad as the 4Kids one. Because- <clears throat> Okay. People that grew up with 4Kids, they basically kind of like Americized anime, and the only good thing in 4Kids 
that they had was Pokemon and Kirby right back at you. Those are the only two ones that were good. Although, I hate to say this, I might ruin some people's childhoods and it's not my fault, but uh, I looked up the voice actor. I'm sorry, but Meta, Meta Knight is not Mexican. <laughs> His voice actor is English. Okay, well, we're not trying to be racist here. Well, I wasn't being racist, I'm just saying. And I don't know how that would ruin anybody's childhood. I mean, if people basically thought Meta Knight was Mexican, but sadly he ain't. And it's weird, but he ain't. He's dark, but I wouldn't think he's Mexican. Like, what are you even t saying? So, in the, uh, dub of, uh, Kirby right back at ya, he has, like, a, um, a Mexican sort of, like, accent, and sounds like a, a flamingo dancer, mm -hmm. but his voice actor is not Mexican. I, his voice actor is actually English, and um, Ricky's uh, voice actor is not Australian. So basically, when it comes to like voice acting, because I sometimes I do like voice uh, voices and stuff of like lines or like different characters. Basically, when it comes to that, they basically change their accent to make them sound like the characters. Okay. Well, interesting. Weird, but it's true. They kind of make it kind of sound like the characters, but it really isn't. And it's weird, but you know, watching Kirby right back at you, I basically forgot how cheesy it was. Okay, right back at you. Is that what it's really called, or what? Yes. <laughs> it, it's literally what it's called. It's literally called Kirby right back at you. That's literally the name of the title. Or could call it, or they could have called it Kirby Touche. <laughs> Well, yeah, that was going to be the title, but they decided to call it Back At Ya, and the theme is called... <laughs> and the, I remember the theme is like, Kirby, right back at ya! That's literally the whole thing the guy keeps saying, right back at ya, like four times, and it's hilarious. Right back at ya, right it, back at ya, right back at ya, right back at ya. Exactly. Try saying that three times fast. Yeah, I know, right? But, <laughs> they, but basically, it's basically about Kirby that comes into uh, Planet Pop Star and like King Dedede is the king and he wants everyone to pay attention on him and not Kirby. So he's basically trying to get rid of him. <laughs> Letting you know that they make King Dedede a legitimate joke. <laughs> yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. Is it the penguin with the giant freaking mallet? Yes. Yeah. They kind of make him a joke in the, in the series. They make Kirby like an adorable little lovable baby. And he is a lovable baby because he literally is a child. A child with immense power. Yeah, basically. Although he doesn't turn Super Saiyan. Yes, and he also doesn't do the Kamehameha wave. Yeah, it's in point. Um, but, uh... Kaioken! Sorry, had to do it. Yeah, I know. I'm not doing the over 9,000 part, and I wish I was wearing my Vegeta shirt, but I'm wearing my Vampire Knight shirt. Oh, well. Um, but when it comes to, like, nostalgia of, like, childhood animes, is that I, in high school, I used to go to an anime club. And when it comes to, like, animes that we all grew up with, we all said, like, the lines from all our favorite animes, and one of them was Dragon Ball Z. I kid you not, all of us, it is the Kamehameha. Like, all of us said it. And Kamehameha! <laughs> yeah, like, all of us said it, because we all grew up with DBZ. And it's just, like, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Naruto, Full Metal Alchemist. That's, like, those, like, the animes that are, like, legit popular back then are basically getting popular now and a lot of people still watch them till this day. I mean, the anime that's still craving now is Demon Slayers. And if you have not seen Demon Slayers, what the heck is wrong with you? Well, I literally just finished the series and I'm waiting for season two and you want to do Kame you want to say Kamehameha together? Oh, God. <clears throat> I'm, my, my dad's like downstairs. He might hear me. <laughs> okay, you don't have to yell it, okay? I might scare my cat. Well, at least it'll keep him from stealing your food. 
I'll be right back. I'm gonna. I'll be right back. I'm gonna um, get the rest of my dad. I can finish it. Okay. All right. I am back. I just had to do something. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I had to go downstairs to give my dad my food. Mm-hmm. I have a question. How old were you when you watched Vampire Night? I think maybe I was, when I first watched it, I was like maybe 13, 14 years old. Like, still, I, yeah. I kind of got you beat. I was 11, 12 years old. <laughs> it literally came out around my middle, my middle school and, um... Yeah, I was still kind of in middle school when that happened, too. Yeah, it was like middle school and elementary school for me. And I remember, um... I remember when I was a kid, my teachers accidentally pushed me into a bus where I always walked to school and walked home. And my mom was supposed to pick me up. So I had to call my mom and I was having a panic attack. So when I came home on the bus... Uh, my mom turned on Vampire Night, and there was hot chocolate on my table, and on the and there was blankets, so I was cozy up in blankets, having hot chocolate, and watching Vampire Night as a kid. So, growing up, Vampire Night was one of my favorite animes in middle school, but the anime that I used to watch with my dad and my brother a lot was Pokemon. Pokemon was one of my favorites growing up. Yeah, well, I never really got into it. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, Pokemon was never really my thing. Pokemon was one of my favorites growing up. I used to watch uh, Pokemon. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, what other video, like, anime adaptations, like, video games. I mean, like, as a kid, like, in high school, there was an adaptation of Dongon Rampa, and I started watching that. But, like, now when I'm, like, watching Dongon Rampa... I still have a hate relationship with the bear. I'm just saying I have played the games. I literally do not like Monokuma because he killed, like, my favorite characters. Is Rest it, in peace, Chiaki. Is it basically characters that like to fuck each other? No. Okay, do you want me to explain <laughs> Dong on... Do you... Do, uh, yeah. Angel, you want me to explain uh, Dong on Rampa for you? Basically, um, what happened was that, uh, in Danganronpa, uh, these uh, students are ultimate, so they're, 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 it's stuff they're really good at. And in the first game, they are trapped in the school, and the only way to get out is to kill someone. And if that, if the killer is not guilty, the people will be executed. But if the killer is guilty, he will be executed. For example, being turned to butter, literally. I'm not kidding, that's an actual execution. Okay, really? A character from Dungan Rapa gets turned into butter. Uh-huh. It's weird. Yeah, but, tell um, me about it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what Dungan Rapa is. It's, uh, basically these people are trapped on a, in a school or an island, and the only way to get out is to kill someone. <laughs> and not get caught. If, if you get caught, you'll get killed. So, it's basically how it goes. Yeah, sure. It's messed up, but that's how it rolls, and it sucks, believe me. I bet. And, uh, I got attached to the characters way too much, and when they died, I literally cried my eyes out. Although, when it comes to the executions, and I play the games, uh, today... I still cry my eyes out because I am a complete puss like that when it comes to me getting attached to characters. Case in point, Lelouch from Code Geass. Can I, can I give you an example of a character I got attached to even though it has nothing to do with anime? What? Well, even long before the gank came out, I was growing attached to Mono. But when Six betrayed oh. him, I fucking cried. And I was very angry and disappointed with Six. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, when it comes to, like, games or, like, anime, I get attached to the characters real fucking quick. I mean, when it comes to, like, animes, like, nowadays, like, for example, like, Demon Slayer. Spoilers, but I'm just saying when it comes to, like, uh, Rengoku, I didn't, like, like them as much, 
But then when I watched the movie, I started getting attached to him. And then, like, then he, you know, and I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. And I'm, like, falling my eyes out. Oh, crap. Well, that's not a spoiler for me because I already saw it. Yeah, but, well, like, when he dies, I cried my eyes out for some reason. And I was not that attached to the character. It's the backstories I tell you. Yeah, I mean, I was really sad, too. And I kind of wanted Although, to cry when in uh, Tanjiro's dream, like, his his baby brother, uh, what what's his face, like, begged him not to leave. Yeah, that hurted me, too. That pulled my heartstrings. But what basically, like, when it comes to, like, animes like that, the, the, the scene that has made me cry the most that I think like a lot of people know about, and if they don't know, then I am I'm letting you know that you're all heartless if you never cry. Is Sasuke versus Itachi, and then after that fight, the, there's another one where Itachi says, "I will always love you," and starts fading away right in front of Sasuke. Oh God, that literally kills me. That like that scene when he fades away kills me every time when I watch Shibuden. I always cry. <laughs> we'll stop watching also, it then. I I can't because like when it comes to like anime and everything, when it comes to like where like an anime character dies, you basically want to know what the fuck happens next. And like I okay, I watch Boruto. Yeah, I watch a lot of it, but I don't watch it as much now because I get spoiled a lot. So plus I'm reading the manga. So what the heck's the point? But okay then. When it comes to, like, anime or, like, mangas and stuff, I read the manga first, and then when they make an anime adaptation, I watch the anime. That was exactly what I did with Fruits Basket. After the original ended, I started watch reading the manga, and then they made a reboot of it. So. Okay. Also, I'm just going to say this. Does anyone get mad when it comes to anime endings, and then you don't get another season, and you don't know what the heck is going on? I, that has happened to me so many times. Case in point, Promise Neverland, because that was recent, and that still pisses me off, and season two never happened and never exists. Yeah, it's also... Because how, how it ended, oh my god, I wanted to throw something. Yeah, I, I was a little disappointed that um, Black Brother, that the uh, Black Blood Brothers didn't get a season two. Yeah, I mean, like, when it comes to anime... Um, like, if it's really popular, they get, like, a second season. And what the se uh, anime that I wanted to second season is Angel of Death. I need a second season of that because the finale literally ticked me off. And a lot of people thought maybe Rachel committed suicide, but I don't think she did because she specifically said in the beginning that she'd never kill herself. Yeah, I think she was... I, t but... Like, a theory that my, one of my friends said is that, like, maybe someone might have killed her and everything because maybe that is what happened and stuff. Also, I ship her with Zach. <laughs> but, like, basically, it's just, like, for, uh, for, like, people that have not seen Angel of Death, you should watch it because it's a really good anime. And then read the manga because that's what I'm doing. I'm reading the manga. But basically what I found out that in the manga is that Rachel's family was killed and then she was killed in a car accident. Okay, well that's weird because Rachel's the one who killed her parents out of self-defense. Yeah, she killed her parents, but then she got hit by a car. Yeah, well, in the anime, um, Dr. Daniel, Daniel Dickens, that's his name kidnaps her and makes her a resident but then makes her a sacrifice after something happened yeah that's what the yeah that's kind of like what's weird about the manga is that they say those things um and they don't put it in the anime if they don't like do it based on it but basically that was the original story but the, then uh they did not put that in the manga so yeah she killed her parents and she was a sacrifice but Either or, it is good as heck, but I also want more Black Butler just cuz. I never really got 100% into that anime. Oh, wow. Ouch. 
Although I'm weird like that, and I'm letting you know, my mom still bans me from Shiki till this day, which I'm questioning why, but there's nothing wrong with Shiki. Although, the only thing is why... wrong is if you can't really handle all the killings and the blood and the gore and whatever shit. Well, yeah, case in point, but I think the reason why my mom didn't want me to watch Shiki is because I was fucking 10 years old. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're not 10 years old anymore. You're an adult. You can watch what the fuck you want. Well, I think I know why my parents banned me from Alpha League. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot a of, scene. like, blood and gore and stuff like that. Oh, no, well, okay. That's the reason why my dad banned me. But the reason, well, okay. The funny thing is, when my mom banned me from that, I still was watching Naruto and Dr Dragon Ball Z, and that, that has a lot of gore and stop in it and a lot of like nudity and violence so that was weird when my mom banned me but the reason why my dad banned me from it was because of the puppy scene Ugh, don't get me started on the puppy scene i don't even want to watch it 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 freaking shattered my heart like how could somebody do that to an innocent dog yeah exactly but like usually when i go to like her past i actually skip that episode Cause I don't want to see that episode. Cause that one like literally tear jerks me, messed up. Yeah, I literally do not like that uh, that scene at all. Cause that that scene like literally destroyed me. Um, like, did it destroy you as much as the scene as the scene where everybody was sacrificed in a uh, uh, what the fuck is it called? Um, oh. Shit, what is it? Berserk. Yeah, actually. Well, okay, no, actually, no. People getting sacrificed in Berserk, that one takes the cake. That was more messed up. Mm hmm. That one scarred me for like almost two months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate Griffith so much, even if I have a thing for bad boys. I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm sorry, Griffith, but you're not on my list. I'm sorry. You're kind of a jerk. Kind of? Is kind. Of Kind of is a bit of an understatement. Well, okay, he's a total jerk. He's the king of jerks, then. Yeah, exactly. Although, in the king of jerks, I already know a jerk more than him. But, you know, case in point. And, and Deaver? Yes. Yeah, but, see, I know you. And yes, I am a My Hero fan. Ain't my fault. I am a huge nut of it. And uh, Daniel knows how much I love Todoroki and Bakugo. Because those two are my top boys. I also yeah. like Dobby. I like the villains. Yeah, and there's like so many yaoi ships with them. Well, here's something fun though. Todoroki and Dobby are actually siblings. So it's, pr it's proven that they're related? Yeah, it is actually in the manga. They are actually siblings. Well, damn! Like, what happened? Just what separated them? Um, there was an accident. His name, his actual real name is Toa, and there was uh, so the black hair is actually fake. It's actually dye, and he took it off, and it has white hair, and he actually uh, was crushed and almost died. He was crushed by a building. Oh fuck! How did he survive that? I don't know, but he literally explained it in the manga, and they're going to show it in season five, and I am scared for that episode. Then don't fucking watch it. All right, Bill, no, I'm going to watch it, because I've been watching season five constantly, and then, oh my god, it is getting so good. And also, Deku is my sweet cinnamon roll, and I love him. Um, or, or sweet blo broccoli or green beans. <laughs> Well, yeah. Also, I have a weird nickname for Bakugo, and people comment on it. I call him my boom daddy. I just call him that because it fits. Oh, but, you know, harder, daddy. <laughs> oh, my God. Remember from Hotel? I mean, has been Hotel? Yeah. Oh, I've been watching that, by the way, because uh, Angel got me into it. But, um, it, when it, like, comes to, like, to, like the characters I like because I actually have a type I have a type and people always ask me okay what's my type my type is bad boys douchey good looking or flirts that's basically my type 
Basically, those are yeah. cocksuckers. Well, I mean, case in point, but also I'm letting you know that also the one that also fits that category is Keo from Fruits Basket. But you know that it, that definitely works, and then also Yuki. But still, I have a thing for those two. Okay, how how's Yuki a douche? Oh, Yuki's a sweetheart. He's a, literally a gentleman. That okay, is also well, why list. did you say he was a douche? Why did you put him in the douche freaking list? Because he can be sometimes if you piss him off. Well, that doesn't count if he's not if he's genuinely a nice person. Well, I mean, he can be douchey when it comes to uh, when it comes to like certain characters in uh, the the remake and the original. He was not that douchey in the remake. Yeah, it is, and it's hot. So, well, he's basically a douche in the remake, but not in the old one. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And Keo's also a douche in the remake, and it, oh my god, yay. But it's just like, I also kind of like uh, guys that are also completely stupid, but are also cute. And not to mention also strong. Case in point, not super fairy tale. He is so dumb. But it's so cute. Natsu? Natsu, yeah. He is literally a dimwit. He's so stupid, but yet so powerful and so adorable. How is and he I so stupid? He, he, he gets shit wrong sometimes. Not to mention the funny, the, the, the gag thing is, he does not like anything that moves besides his own feet. So when it comes to trains or cars or boats, or basically, uh, carts, uh, he gets sick. That is the funny part. He gets sick every time when things move. It's <clears throat> so funny. He doesn't get okay. sick when it comes to happy, though. Oh, and, oh my gosh. Can you believe how much of a crybaby Zenitsu is? I know, right? And the only time he gets better is when he's freaking asleep. I know. I mean, he is such a crybaby and freaking whining over ev and complaining over every also, little thing. Also, poor freaking Izzy. <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't even get me started. Is it yet? Yeah, nobody you know Nezuko's nickname is Nezzy. That's what we call her. That's that's literally her name. Her name is Nezzy, and she's adorable, and we love her. Well, that's what you call her, but I don't call her that. Like, Nezuko Chan! Nezuko I call her Chan! Oh my god. I call her Nezzy, though. <laughs> yeah, I love Tan I think it's. I love. Tanjiro's also awesome. He's literally, like, the best brother. Although. Yeah, I the love best brothers, in my opinion. Yeah. My, uh, also, well. The best brothers, in my opinion, will always be Ed and Al from Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Yes, and in well, I don't like Inosuke's personality, but I like his skills. Oh, Inosuke! Well, I mean, I mean, true. I mean, Inosuke can be a douche, but you know, I mean, for me, again, the girl that likes douchebags, I like Inosuke. Although I do have a crush on. Someone, but okay, you know what? Well, Inosuke is a bit like Bakugo, so. Yeah, case in point. Although, there is a character that people question why I, uh, who I like, and that character is none other than Muzin. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I like him. It ain't my fault. Yeah, well, I like I like some bad guys too. Like I I like Rui. Also, people basically wonder why I like Naraku from, um, Inuyasha. Again, I was a child! Not my fault! Well, besides, he's hot. Yeah, case in point. I mean, as a kid, my That's childhood... That's the only redeeming coach... quality. Hell yeah. But, uh, as a kid, my childhood crushes were in Inuyasha. Was Inuyasha, of course. Shishomaru, Koga, and Naraku. Not my fault! Not even Moroku? Oh, well, I did have a thing for Moroku. <laughs> Even though he's a freaking perv. I mean, again! I mean, there was a perv I had a crush on another anime, which was Ame from, um, from Fruits Basket, because he's a perv as well. Ame? But, 
uh, well, Ayame is uh, Yuki's brother, and oh my god, Yuki hates him the bits. But, you know, what is, he's a snake, so it kind of works. But in the remake, it is so hilarious, their bond, and he's trying his best to be a great brother, and Yuki's just like, yeah, no, I hate your ass. But it's just like, when it comes to, like, characters, like, douchey and everything, it's just like, yeah, they can be douchey, but they can be redeemable. And I'm letting you know, I'm also saying Sasuke, because he can't, he was redeemable. Although when he was evil, it kind of was actually awesome as hell. But still, I do love him redeemable, yeah, because he's also yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah, you get turned on by evil bad boys. I mean, yes, but there was a, there's a character that I like that's not evil. Yeah, and you, and it's obvious you don't deny it. And that's Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. He's not evil. That I said a person that is not evil. I meant, uh, I basically mean that I do like guys that are evil, but I also like guys that are gentle sweethearts, which is also Ed. And the funny thing is that his voice actor voices Broly from the new uh, Dragon Ball Z movie, which I love because he's a teddy bear. You mean um, you mean Dragon Ball Ball Super? Yeah, that oh is actually God. Vic Mignogna. Yeah, and I can't believe that this Broly is like so not like the one. The original. Yeah, I mean, I was shocked. I thought they would bring back the old one. I always imagined what it'd be like if he was kind and didn't really like violence instead wanted to yeah. protect people instead of destroy them i always wondered what it's like but no they basically brought that in the dragon ball universe do you actually want to know a fun fact what so this broly is actually based on the manga the uh manga broly is exactly like this dragon ball super is actually based on the manga yeah, and this is that. actually the based on the manga because you also get to meet goku's mom and you never did in the original, and she was never even mentioned. You get yeah, to Yeah, I saw Goku's mom. mom. Oh god, that scene always made me cry. It was like they they said we'll come back for you. That never happened. Screw you, Frieza. I still hate your lizard, stupid, dickless butt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, there's there's a reason why I hate Frieza with a burning passion. I mean, one, he destroyed a planet. Two, he killed my Vegeta baby what? and stuff. But either or, I'm glad that my son Trunks turned him into Frieza Sushi and then burned him to a crisp. Mm -mm. So. Yeah. Also, and people ask what my favorite saga is. No, it's not the Kid Buu saga. Although that was one of my favorite sagas, it will be the Cell saga because that saga is awesome. Yeah. And remember the freaking little games that we played? Yeah, those were weird. You know, like her like heretic, you know, like a uh, uh something or heretic. I can't remember in sing singing or no singing, whatever. I can't remember what those games are called. Oh yeah. By the way, I'm letting you know. Yes. Oh, Angel testament or heretic. That's what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Me and Angel, I keep freaking up. Me and Angel basically also like diabolical lovers, and I gave her Subaru because I'm a nice person. Yeah, and I ended up giving Ayato to you, which I really didn't want to do. I mean, he fits my category, you know that, right? <laughs> I mean, neither are. I also have a thing for Reggie, so yeah, I mean, still. It's Reggie, not Reggie. Oh, uh, wait, I'm thinking of Bleach. Dang, I need to stop watching Bleach. <laughs> we both know that ain't gonna happen, sweetie. Yeah, no. But I also have a thing for Lot to know because he's a perv and he's adorable while doing it. And I also have a thing for Katsuno because even if he's creepy, it's cute. Yeah, and I think one of the funniest anime perverts is always gonna be Jiraiya. Oh, God, rest in peace. <laughs> Yeah, it's sad. Like, Naruto literally, and, like, you know, mourned over him. Yeah. And also, yeah, I'm letting you know, I also like Orochimaru, but it's not my fault. It's yeah. who I am. Yeah, it's weird. basically a Michael Jackson snake. Sort of. <laughs> Except he's attractive. 
Um, so, like, when it comes to, like, anime characters and stuff, when, like, they die, it's just, if it's a character I'm not attached to, I don't cry. But if it's a character I'm attached to, I start crying. So, yeah, it's hard. Also, if they're a husband, though, yeah, then that hurts even more. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am talking about Lelouch from Code Geass. That literally turned me off from anime for, like, almost a month. Actually, no, almost a year, actually, when that happened. Yeah, uh-huh. Wouldn't, wouldn't it have been so nice to be captured by a, by a freaking sexy villain that was, like, you know, became so into you? Yes. I already basically kind of made a fanfic to that a long time ago. Yeah, let's keep was... that to yourself, okay? Because we're freaking... We're not live, but we're recording, so let's not freaking go any detail about that. So it wasn't, okay, again I was a child, and again it wasn't inappropriate, it was just go, us going on dates. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. No, it was not like that, <laughs> but yeah. <coughs> I mean, either or, and also letting you know, yes, I like Zero and Kaname, but I'm sharing them with Angel. Yeah, we're, we're sharing them. Even if I had the plushies and the t-shirt, but still. We agreed to share them, period. It doesn't matter if you have the plushies. Case in point. So, can you tell us about your anime girl crushes? Oh, dear lord. Okay, I have a certain anime girl crush that a lot of people basically should know who that is, and that is SF. I like girls that can kick butt. It ain't my fault. If a girl can kick your butt, then they're basically on my list. Girls that can kick butt, or if they are awesome as heck, then yes. I basically like them. So, Especially, as did is on my list. Because she's literally my waifu. Especially Mocha? Especially Mocha, yeah. Especially her. I mean, hello. But even, though I her, even though her even though her name is literally the name of a coffee too. Yeah, exactly. I also like Rize from uh, High School DxD. I mean, she's the devil. Rize. Literally, the devil. Is it Rize or Rias? It's re. It's pronounced Rize, but it's in the anime. It's Rias, but it's pronounced Rize. Well, re I'm, when you say Rize, I'm thinking Tokyo Ghoul. Yeah, it's actually Riaz, but I pronounce it Rize. Well, I'm gonna pronounce it the way it's supposed to be pronounced so I don't get confused. Yeah, I like Riaz. Um, I also like Urza and Lucy from Fairy Tale. And speaking of my gu of ghouls and stuff like that, like I still need your help with Yuzuki. Oh, oh, uh, one of your characters. Yeah, like, she's kind of basically ne like Nezuko, like, she wears a bamboo muzzle so she can't eat flesh, but how well, she turned into a ghoul is still unclear. Didn't I, didn't I mention that she gets crushed by a boulder and then, uh, like, a bunch of or uh, ghoul organs get transferred into her? Well, I don't want to quite, you know, copy Kaneki. Well, I said a boulder... And instead of, like, a date, it would be just, like, a random person that decided to donate his organs. Well, she, unlike, she has to, like, lose part of her humanity against her will, you know? Well, I mean, it could be, like, a messed up blind date gone wrong, but different. Yeah, I don't know. We can discuss this more off air or something, even though it's not live. <laughs> Trues. Trees. Okay. And I'm imagining Yui as a vampire, but also has a bamboo muzzle, but um, a pure blood took her humanity against her will, and Yui has a sister and is trying to find a way to get her human again. And what's keeping her from turning feral, like level E slash feral, is like yeah. a spell that was cast on the a bamboo muzzle that she wears. I mean, she's a. I mean, the claws are still there, but she's, but she's still, like, you know, able to keep her sanity and to kind of keep her thirst under control. And, yeah, another way of getting her strength is through 
slumber, you know, like how, like with Nezuko. Where, uh, can we maybe tell them about the Inuyasha RP we're doing? Yeah, sure, go ahead and tell them. So we're doing like a sort of like Avatar, sort of like Inuyasha, vampire, kind of demon slayer sort of RP. And we have these characters that are benders. Um, so we have Amber, the daughter of uh, Shishomaru and Rin. And then we have Archer, her brother, which is the son of Shishomaru and Rin. I forgot the character that was an earthbender that he's married to. Her, her name's Yan. Yeah, so he is married to Yan, and they have three kids. Uh, their names are Rose, uh, Inru, and then Sagato. And Sagato is married and, to... And Maru, the, don't you mean... You, don't you mean Rose Iwaki? Yeah, Rose and Iwaki, and then we have Sagato. And he is married to the adopted daughter of Kagome, uh, Toru. And she is actually Raven and Demon Inuyasha's child. She actually escaped from the fallen angel uh, Raven's uh, clutches. Yeah, basically escaped from the now formed... <laughs> well, yeah, and now she is literally married, uh, is married to, um, Zagato, and they recently have a daughter named Caroline. Don't, I thought you said Carolina. Yeah, uh, well, it's pronounced, I was gonna name her Caroline, but yes, they recently have a daughter named Carolina. And she is now going to be a vampire Inuyasha's new BFF. Yeah, except, like, should vampire e Should Kagome find a way to make him human again? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And, uh, if you're wondering, no, they cannot go back together, because if that happens, they, one, uh, they will both die, actually. So... What can, who cannot what? Uh, human, uh, Inuyasha and demon Inuyasha, they can't fuse together because they will both die. Okay. So, like, if the two halves are split, they can't be put together. If they do, they will die. And yeah, and Inuyasha does, uh, get his memories back eventually, but I'm not sure how. Yeah, not sure either, but, uh... He has a daughter named Ruby, which she is reformed, and she is married, um, and they have a daughter, so, yeah, she is reformed and everything, so, and, no, and she No is, more next generation shit, I'm tired of that. Yeah, I know, I'm not gonna do it anymore, I got bored of it anyways. I got, I ran out of characters. But, uh, basically when it comes to, uh, the, uh, characters and everything, it kind of works. But yeah, we are doing uh, that, and uh, Toru is a firebender, so she bends fire, while she is married to an earthbender. And uh, Roy is basically her sort of half-brother, but he is a complete perv when it comes to Toru. Well, I think he kind of stops that after he got himself a girlfriend. Yeah, until he got himself a girlfriend, he stopped sort of doing stuff to her. Plus, if he tried to, Sagato will literally give him a new one. Yeah, and you also kind of forgotten, got about Kohaku. Oh yeah, Kohaku and Amber are together, and jeez, those people are literally in love. Yeah, like, uh, he, Kohaku, I kind of used also Spirited Away as a crossover as well, using Kohaku yeah. from that. Yeah, and they call him yep. Mas Master Kohaku, because, yeah, he's a master waterbender. And unlike female waterbenders who have healing abilities, he can heal, too. Yeah, he uh, also was very loving to Amber, and he loves his two kids, which are uh, Shu, which means water. and Shui, then um, actually. Yeah, Shui, and then we also have Mizu. So we have two kids that mean water, and he loves them to bits. And he also kind of works as a doctor or physician. Yeah, and he, and he is a very loving husband to Amber because he's always there for her. And 
basically the beginning of the story was their love story and then they started the family and then um basically they uh then they they started a family together but still it kind of works so it's cute as heck yeah i guess so i mean the reason why i did the next generation version then another next generation is because i wanted like the tradition to continue with like more benders and people becoming stronger so if you wonder why i did that i'm letting you know angel the reason why i did that is because i wanted like the generations to get stronger let me see so I wanted like the bending to pass down and people to get like stronger when it comes to like bending and stuff. Mm. Although the only firebender sadly is Toru. Wasn't, My there, wasn't there another firebender? I can't even remember. Ruby? She's a firebender? Yeah. Well then Toru's not the only one. Well actually Toru's the only one that bends blue fire. Basically lightning, okay. Well she basically blue fire like Azula, but yeah. Azula. Azula. I, I hated her in Avatar The Last ben Airbender. I hated her so much. So, and yes, I used to, I ship, I always will ship Zuko and Guitar together. Aang and Guitar never existed in my opinion. Um, well, I'm gonna get some rest and stuff. I gotta go do stuff tomorrow. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us on this podcast today. No problem. Okay, well, we'll see you, all right? Yep. All right. Laters. Laters, bye. Bye. Okay, so we're closing off with that, and I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, follow my Instagram, Twitter, and DeviantArt, and go subscribe to Arabella's YouTube account. And I will see you all next time. Stay creative!